What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So we had a decent show tonight, a couple ups and downs. Uh, unfortunately, we had a couple matches from other promotions that we saw aired on the show. Was hoping we would get away from that, but there was some positive in those matches as they were current storyline based matches. A um, couple other things I didn't care for, but we'll get into it and we'll talk about them along the way. So we open the show with LAX versus The Cult of Lee, Caleb Conley and Trevor Lee. Um, this was a decent match. Uh, LAX started off the action early, uh, meeting Conley and Lee right at the entrance ramp with uh, a suicide dive and a flip over the top rope. So they fight outside the ring before the match. Match finally gets underway. Um, so it seemed like the commentators were really focused on the uh, Global Wrestling Network here as they were plugging the hell out of it. Um, but yeah, LAX started the, out, the match on top. Uh, then Lee and Conley had control. Uh, Santana gets the hot tag and LAX is rolling. They LAX hits a uh, wheelbarrow cutter, cutter combination. Uh, they go for the pin, but it's broken up. Uh, LAX sets up for the street sweeper, but Conley pushes uh, Santana off the top rope, and Lee rolls up Ortiz in the ring for the win. So later on in the show, we find out that with this victory, the uh, two teams will be matching up again at Crossroads, this time for the tag team titles. So that is one match that is set up for Crossroads, which is in two weeks. Uh, later on, we find out the number one contender for the for Austin Aries Championship. Uh, up next, we have Brian Cage versus Hunter Law. This was a very quick match, as the commentators were talking about, over under a minute. Um, I think it just lasted a hair over a minute. Uh, Cage wins again with the drill claw. Uh, so I'm guessing that Cage's first match, will his actual match against another roster member will probably be at redemption uh, i would assume that this is kind of just getting cage on tv and obviously showcasing him for his strength while some other competitors are kind of moving off of tv so we're going to see this for a little while longer which is fine because you want to get everybody used to him and seeing his dominance. So we go backstage and Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley are sitting down together. And Edwards says, we don't have to like each other, but we can still take care of business in the ring. And then the two leave short and sweet, kind of just gets the point across. And we have our first match outside of the impact zone. So we go to Destiny World Wrestling in Canada, where we see Matt Seidel taking on Petey Williams, uh, apparently for the Grand Championship. So, the uh, during this, the commentators make mention of uh, Matt Seidel's spiritual advisor, and that apparently he has changed Matt Seidel's attitude, and that has led to some victories for him. Then they go on about the you know Destiny World Wrestling, talking about the promotion, and then plugging some future Twitch shows. But uh, I believe it was announced earlier this week that they're going to do a Twitch taping in March at Destiny World Wrestling. I'll talk more about that on the Impact Report this weekend. But, uh, yeah, this was a, a decent match, you know, for what it was. Crowd was into it, uh, obviously, since this was in Canada and Petey is Canadian. They were very behind him. Um, but Matt Seidel ends up winning after he reversed a Canadian Destroyer, kind of just dropped down right on PD and got the victory. Um, so like I said, that there was some positive with this because after the match, Matt Seidel pulled out a scroll, which I guess was written by his spiritual advisor or something. I kind of missed that part. But uh, he is challenging Ishimori for the X Division title at Crossroads. So we, we kind of took this and... We made it into a positive because we made it storyline based and now we have something moving forward from here. So that was definitely a positive. I, I hope that was, you know, one of the things we see in the future that if our impact stars are gonna be broadcast in other promotions, it's going to be have something helping with the storyline or continuing a story or something like that. So this was definitely a positive from something that a lot of people were not happy to see. Um, 
Then we have Jacob, Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong backstage. Um, Jacobs says he hopes Abyss comes down tonight to face the new monster of Impact Wrestling, Congo Kong. And right after that, we go to the ring with uh, Congo Kong and Jimmy Jacobs. They see, you know, they tell uh, Joseph Park that they asked nicely to bring out the monster. They, they didn't have to beat up Chandler or break or destroy their office. Um, so then he goes on to call out Abyss. And to everybody's surprise, uh, Grandma Jenny comes out. So uh, she says that they need to stop treating Joseph badly or else. And, of course, Jimmy says he asked for Abyss and not this old hag. So he gets slapped at this point. Um, Congo Kong starts going toward Grandma Jenny, and that's when Joseph Park comes out. Uh, Jacob says, you're Joseph Park. We asked for Abyss. Park says, Abyss is never coming back. Uh, so Jacob says it would be terrible for something to happen to Grandma Jenny, and Park goes to attack Jacobs at this point, and Congo attacks Park, and that's kind of that. Um, it was a decent segment. I know a lot of people weren't too fond of it. Wasn't my favorite segment. Wasn't the worst thing in the world. But they're progressing the storyline here. Um, I, I would assume... I was actually mentioned that next week we'll see Joseph Park and Congo Kong face off. It's probably a match building toward redemption between Abyss and Congo Kong, which if they keep hyping it the way they're doing it, I would assume it would probably be some sort of monster ball match or something to that extent. Uh, but Jacobs is doing a really good job bringing Congo Kong across as, well, the new monster like he likes to call it. Um, yeah. Because like I had said a couple months back when I just saw Congo Kong wrestling just there, no story, no nothing, and I had no interest in it, but at least Jacobs is doing something to get Congo a little more relevant. So this wasn't the greatest segment, but we go backstage and Seidel's on the phone talking to his spiritual advisor about sending out the challenge to Ishimori. Um, so not not that it was it was terrible because, again, it's building to that match. Um, but for some reason, I don't know why they can't get not, not singling out impact for this. Cause I know WWE does it as well, but Sidel was holding the phone and you can see it was clearly on the homepage. It's just simple things. Have somebody take their phone and put it on silent, keep it in the room and let them call them at least make it look like a legitimate phone call. Um, another positive thing, Impact is listening, because up next we had the Global Wrestling Network Rewind. We saw the debut of uh, Moose, and this was kept nice and short. That was it. I, that's what I wanted. I know a lot of other people wanted it as well, and that's what we got. So, for people that aren't too sure if Impact is listening, I believe they are. And we have our second match from another promotion, where we go to Vegas to see Alberto versus Moose. Um... This match was hyped uh, last week, so, I mean, it is continuing storyline. Um, this was a Vegas no-DQ match, I guess, or just a regular no-DQ match that happened in Vegas. But uh, it, it was it was decent for what it was. The arena looked a little uh, old, um, but Alberto spit some water into Moose's face. They b battled into the crowd. Half the match took place in the crowd. Uh Plastic Garbage Can came into uh, play again like it did in the uh, Fatal 4-Way number one contenders match. Uh, it was at two weeks back. Um, so Alberto brings the can into the ring, hits Moose over the head with it, and then low blows Moose. They battle back and forth for a bit, and Alberto ends up going over with the double stomp in the corner as Moose was in the trio woe position. So... A little bit surprising there. I kind of figured that Moose would go over, but I'm guessing this feud is not over with. Then we get a look back at the Hanaya and Rosemary feud. Um, we go backstage, and Mackenzie is interviewing EC3 and Tyrus. EC3 says that him and Tyrus are a mix of the Avengers, Tyrus mostly the Hulk, while EC3 is a mix of Captain America, Iron Man, and then Tyrus adds... Thor as well. Um, EC3 says that he is going to beat Johnny tonight and get his title shot at Crossroads. So up next we have Ohio versus Everything versus Bobby Lashley and Eddie Edwards. Um, this match was made after last week um, 
when Lashley had fought Callahan and OBE had gotten involved after the match and Eddie Edwards came out for the save and like we saw in the backstage segment earlier on um, that these two were at least on the same page for now. Um, but yeah, so this was a decent enough match. Uh, it's kind of a little lopsided here with two former world champions uh, being tag team partners, but uh, they fight outside the ring before the match starts. Then they go back in, or the match might have started, I don't really recall. Uh, but Lashley dominated for a bit. Uh, Edwards gets the tag in, and then the Chris brothers are able to get the upper hand. Callahan gets involved a couple times, pulls Le uh, Edwards' legs, and then Edwards goes to the outside and gets thrown onto the apron. Uh, Lashley gets the tag again, and he goes in, and he controls the match. Uh, Edwards gets the tag after... Lashley had dominated. Edwards hits a suicide dive on both Chris brothers outside the ring. Um, Lashley takes out Callahan. Edwards hits the Boston knee party on Jay Christ, and that is the match. We go backstage. Actually, it's probably just an interview that Ed, uh, or a little promo that Eli did. Uh, he talks about his title loss and that he will be back for the championship, and he says that he is at a different level, though, and Aries' title reign will be short-lived. And that brings us to the main event of Johnny Impact versus EC3. Uh, Johnny Impact putting his number one contendership on the line, and the winner will face Austin Aries at Crossroads. Uh, before the match starts, Tyrus takes Johnny Impact's glasses that he handed to a fan and broke them in half. So he's screwing around with Johnny Impact, which uh, Josh Matthews had made... Uh, mention of the fan's name and Sanjay was kind of like how, how do you know her name he was like we've been here forever I, I start to I know a lot of the fans so it was, it was interesting um but they go back and forth for a bit uh impact gets knocked off the apron onto the outside uh at this point EC3 gets the upper hand he controls the match um they fight back and forth for a bit Johnny goes up top of the count out to impact this point, kind of Tyrus is kind of staring at him, just letting him know, you know, I'm here too. So uh, be careful what you do. Um, so this causes EC3 to go up top. He hits a super TK3. Impact kicks out. Uh, then we get the same exact spot from last week where Tyrus kick, uh, smacks Impact's legs off the rope, and EC3 goes for the pin, using his uh, or putting his feet on the ropes as leverage. But this time. Johnny kicks out. Um, Johnny hits a sliding German, goes up for Starship Pain. Tyrus holds Johnny's legs. Uh, at this point, uh, the referee is distracted with Tyrus. EC3 is able to hit the one percenter, goes for the pin. The referee is still distracted. Impact kicks out at two. This point, EC3 is pissed because Tyrus caused the referee's distraction, which... He would have gotten the three count had the referee's attention been focused on the pinfall. So him and Tyrus get into it, and Tyrus says, screw this, and he leaves. Uh, Impact hits Starship Pain, and he wins the match and will face Aries at Crossroads. Austin Aries comes out. Two of them stare at each other, shake hands, and that is that. That was the show. Uh, looking forward to Impact versus uh, Austin Aries, though. That should be a great match. Um, and yeah, like, like, I know a lot of people have been complaining and well, people are always going to complain, so that doesn't matter. But this first set of tapings, we have guys leaving the company that that's the first and foremost thing. So we have to send them out of the way. They're taking up room for future storylines and things like that. Like they have said time in and time out that or time and time again, I think that's the expression, that this is going to be a process. So people shitting on the product, just stick with it, and it will get better. Even though we didn't have a bad show tonight, it was just nothing too crazy happened. But, yes, that was my Impact review. I will catch you guys this weekend for the Impact report. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.